everyone, welcome back to another video where today I want to do something a little bit different. As you all know, I've been very much enjoying the brand new episodes of Doctor Who. So much so that I've had comments of people saying I'm being paid off by Disney. And I can tell you for a fact, if I was, I'd be living in a mansion on the moon. But it has given me pause to think, and there is something about the new Russell T Davis era that's kind of been bothering me. And it's not something exclusive to the new Russell T Davis era, it's just you can also be found in the previous Russell T Davis era, but it seems to have heightened in these recent episodes. What is that, you may ask? Well, it's his tendency to create very convenient endings to stories. But before we talk about it, do me a little favour, subscribe if you're new, that'd be very much appreciated. We are trying to get to 24,000 subscribers for 2024. Any support would be greatly appreciated on that front, getting to that goal. Thank you for all the support, and let's get right into it. As you all know, I'm a big fan of RTD's version of Doctor Who. I think he nails character stuff. I think often he creates stories with such interesting, unique concepts with some of the best actors in the land. However, I never said he was a perfect writer. Nobody truly is. And a pattern I've noticed with Russell, particularly with Doctor Who, but it's not exclusive to Doctor Who, is that he very much makes endings that feel quite rushed. The first time this properly stuck out to me recently was with the Star Beast. So for those of you who don't remember, the Meta Crisis was this story arc from 15 years ago where basically Donna absorbed the mind and the consciousness of the Doctor, but in doing so, it burnt up her human brain and the Doctor basically had to wipe all traces of the Doctor and their adventures in order to save her life. Fast forward to the Star Beast with the reintroduction of the Doctor and Donna, and naturally this had to be addressed. Now, I don't actually mind the way they explain it with the Meta Crisis passing down genetically. I actually think that makes perfect sense. My issue more comes in with the scene towards the end where Donna says, just let it go. And essentially, the Meta Crisis energy that was previously fatal to Donna Noble just sort of gets dispelled by both her daughter and Donna Noble. Now, the issue that I'm highlighting here is not the issue that I've seen a lot of people highlight with the ending of this, where it's to do with the whole male presenting Time Lord line, although I will admit that's also messy in its execution. My issue more comes in with the fact that this was something that for 15 years fans lived with as their reality. This was a big ending for this character, an iconic ending for this character, and I don't necessarily mind changing that, but just making it so easy to get rid of the Meta Crisis in this way, it felt a bit too easy for what was such a tragic event in the story of the Doctor and Donna. There's also the aspect of Beep from each ship and the damage done to London. So for those of you who don't know, in the end of the Star Beast, the Beep's plan is to power his ship using a double-bladed dagger drive. I hope I'm saying that right. And in doing so, it basically plunges into the core of the Earth and all of London starts being on fire and cracks in the road start appearing. And then, in the climax, the Dr. Donna memory gets restored and they basically use Techno Babble to completely reverse all the effects. Now, I'll admit that the follow-up scene to this is very emotional, with the Doctor holding Donna in his arms as he thinks she's about to die. However, I don't love that the cracks just immediately get reversed. It feels a bit too neat of a resolution. Something I liked in the original Russell era was when an alien invasion happened, oftentimes you'd see the fallout from it in later episodes. For example, there's like multiple scenes where you can see Big Ben being reconstructed, following a alien ship crashing into it in series one. Things like that not only helped with world building, but also it made you feel that there were consequences to what was going on in the wider Doctor Who world. When things just get reversed completely, it kind of lessens that for me. And this isn't the only example of that. Another example is with the toy maker in The Giggle, where he turned everyone in the human race absolutely insane. And then the solution is to just completely erase the toy maker from history as they play a game of catch, and then all of the damage that the giggle did is just completely reversed. Now, I guess I can buy that explanation more on the basis that if he never existed, then the calamity would have never happened, but it still feels like a missed opportunity to not show the aftermath of an Earth that was just dealing with what was a pretty apocalyptic event. I would say the story in the 60th episode that feels the least prone to this, in my opinion, 
is wildly honoured, because every aspect of the ending is set up pretty well, from the slow walking robot to the countdown that's going on throughout the episode. However, even then, you can make the argument that the TARDIS appearing when it does is a little convenient. However, I'm willing to write that off on the basis that in the beginning of the episode, they establish that the TARDIS leaves somewhere when it sees hostile action and returns when the hostile action is done. So that made sense to me. So I think that ending's fine. However, it happened again just recently with Ruby Road, where the Doctor time travels back to save Ruby from the goblins and pulls down their ship, which is fine, using the gloves that were established earlier on in the episode. But not only does he kill the Goblin King, but also their ship completely just evaporates completely, like it was never there. Now, you could make the argument again that it's to do with time travel and the fact that the Goblins were never supposed to be there, so they're getting a raised Marty McFly style. But again, it does just feel like a bit of an easy way to just completely wipe any consequences from this event, even in the minorest of senses. I mean, it wouldn't have made much of a difference if you'd have had just like the vicar come out and be like, how are we gonna repair that? Oh my God, what's happened? Or what the hell? Or something like that. It wouldn't have been that different. And I guess my issue is, is that sometimes with the endings of Russell's stories, they all feel a bit too convenient and not always fully satisfying. And this isn't, again, something that's just exclusive to Russell T. Davis too. I felt the same way with the series three ending where the year of Saxon gets completely reversed, and the only people who remember it are the people on the ship, and for the rest of the world, it never even happened. That felt too convenient to me, not to mention the whole Archangel thing of if people say the Doctor enough, he gets completely restored. And Series 4 does it as well with Journey's End, basically making the resolution to stopping the Daleks, the Doctor and Donna flicking a bunch of switches. Now again, the reason I don't mind this as much as I do with some other writers is because Russell does mask it with great emotional moments. With Junie's End, it's obviously the, the Metacrisis, Dr. Donna memory wipe scene. With the Star Beast, it's the scene where the Doctor thinks Donna's going to die. However, in the cases of the Church on Ruby Road and the Giggle, I wouldn't say that reasoning is as applicable. It kind of just feels like an easy way of resetting us to a status quo. And what I want to see from LTD2 going forwards is more of that impact from the events of these endings. Not every ending has to be this neat and tidy thing where the world goes on pretending nothing ever happened. That was something I loved about the first Russell era is that it felt like humanity was changing as these events were happening. And it's strange too because when you look at Russell's usage of other writers' works, he seems to do a pretty good job of resolving things where, frankly, they weren't that easy to discern what happened in the first place. I'm specifically talking about how Russell essentially resolves the Flux storyline by saying, yes, half the universe was wiped out because Tex Hayden was trying to kill the Doctor. Something that wasn't immediately obvious to anyone who watched The Vanquishers, but does add not only a new layer of depth to the character, but also closure for people who were confused by that series. So he's capable of ending these stories in a way that feels satisfactory. And on the emotional end and on the character end, he always excels. I just think sometimes if a ending or a climax reverts any and all consequences of the story, it can end up feeling a little bit cheap for an audience member. Maybe I'm alone in this, but it's a pattern I've noticed. And it's a pattern that I hope series one or series 14, whatever you want to call it, breaks. I want to stress, I love this new era, but that doesn't mean I think it's immune from criticism. I do have my issues with it, but I am really enjoying it. But let me know down in the comments below what you think. I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts on this. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like, comment down below your thoughts, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you later.